What's up, Comic Book Nation? We're running through the top five stories from the past 24 hours like we do every day, 7 p.m. Eastern Time in Comic Book Now. What's up, Comic Book Nation? I am your host, Brandon Davis. Please call me BD. We're friends here. Welcome to our studio. I'm joined by Lucas Siegel. Hello. Uh, Lucas is currently monitoring the comment section, so questions, comments, concerns, send them our way. We'll address them after we get through the top five stories in Comic Book Now, and let's start with the news. Uh, the fastest man alive is looking for a cameo. Yes, that's right. Our first story, Usain Bolt, wants to pop up in the upcoming Flash movie with Ezra Miller whenever it finally gets released. The nine-time Olympic gold medalist revealed his wish to appear in the DC film in an interview with MTV, which is really the least surprising answer. Did anybody expect him to say anything else? I mean, the fastest man alive wants a cameo as Charles Xavier, who can't walk or even run. That makes no sense. Actually, while we're at it, let's just save a bunch of money on special effects to Warner Brothers and cast him as Wally West, shall we? Next up, the explanation for Darth Vader's first scene in Rogue One, which we've all seen by now, given its impressive box office haul, more than impressive, has been revealed. Vader's first appearance in the Star Wars story wasn't uh, when he was forced choking that plebe, uh, but instead the smoky back-to-tank scene. That tank is what keeps Vader alive, by the way, though not actually healing him uh, from his burns received in Episode 3. It was a call made by director Gareth Edwards, who says he wanted an effect of seeing the back of Vader's head and going, Oh my God, that's so cool. That was actually his voice. That's a recording. Uh, well, mission accomplished, Gareth. Uh, I have to say, though, I think we'll all agree the coolest Vader part in that movie was the sequence at the end, the action sequence, uh, which for the first time had me wishing the movie wasn't going to end. Speaking of not ending, the chatter about Deadpool and Wolverine sharing the screen for the first time is not ending. It's as loud as ever. Uh, following last week's rumors and denials, uh, the two actors responsible for the characters have offered their perspective on the two heroes, if you can even call Deadpool that. Uh, crossing paths on the big screen, Ryan Reynolds says they have outlines and stories for a number of different films when asked if there are plans for a crossover. But Hugh Jackman sounds like he needs a little bit of convincing. Jackman says... He sees how the crossover could be a perfect fit. I mean, they are both R-rated, uh, but he does admit he thinks the timing might be off. I don't know what he's talking about. He's just about done with being Wolverine. Logan is his last time, so there is no better time or no other time than right now. Let's go, Hugh. Let's do it. Uh, anyway, finally, The Walking Dead has come back to comic book now, which is exciting. So you know, uh, you know how when we get to the back half of the seasons and the cast members start saying things like, man, the season finale is brutal. Dude, the ending is insane. Ugh. I couldn't breathe after reading the script. Melissa McBride actually did say that last one uh, ahead of the season six finale. But this time around, they're celebrating. Andrew Lincoln said today that when he read the season seven finale script, there was a moment that made him put it down, punch the air, and do a little jig. Yes, he's English. He really said jig. And I do believe he really did dance because this is why. Season seven is finally building towards Rick and the communities taking on Negan and the Saviors. He'll probably meet King Ezekiel in the mid-season premiere, thanks to Jesus. And the first win in battle will be claimed by Alexandria on April 2nd for the finale. That's the hot take you heard here first. It's, uh, it's what every single fan wants, but I promise you nobody wants it more than Rick Grimes. Uh, and now our last story before we turn it over to the comment section. Michael Keaton is talking a little bit of trash uh, about DC now that he's joined Marvel, huh? Uh, after joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe as Spider-Man Homecoming's villainous vulture, Keaton opened up about Batman Forever and why he didn't stick around for the role in that movie. As we know, Joel Schumacher took over the franchise as the director for Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, but Keaton jumped ship before crashing and burning with it. He tells THR, it sucked. I knew it was going to be trouble when he said, why does everything have to be so dark? Well, that's a question some fans have been asking in the wake of Batman vs. Superman. Christopher Nolan kind of found that balance with the Dark Knight trilogy. Maybe Keaton was born a little early and should have been Batfleck. I don't know. But uh, Keaton's career inevitably dipped after he dipped out on the role and also turned down the role of Jack Shepard on 2004's Lost Pilot, by the way. Uh, but he did bounce back, kind of, by making fun of himself a little bit in Birdman. And Spider-Man Homecoming will obviously be a game changer for his career. Huge boost that we're all looking forward to. Uh, at looking back, it can sometimes be a good thing to bail on Batman. Get, get it? Bail. That, that pun was the bane of my existence. Oh, that's two for two, guys. Uh, all right, so we're going to turn it over to the comments section. This is my favorite part of the show. Lucas, what are they saying? What do they want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, guys, we got tons of comments, tons of questions. Please uh, keep sending them in right now. I'm reading them as we go along. You might see a little like come up on yours. That means we're probably going to try to get to yours, so keep going. Uh, first off, do you think Dokken will be in the Logan movie? Justin James Cameron asks. Asking about Logan's son. Could he show up in that movie? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think X-23 is there. We're going to focus on that relationship. Right. 
look, I've seen the first 40 minutes. I can't tell you, I can't say yes or no out of that. Uh, that information will be coming very soon. The first 40 minutes was amazing. Yeah. Uh, it was fantastic. Um, but uh, I don't think that they're going to bring in Doc, and I think it's going to be more of the relationship between Logan uh, and Laura, uh, X-23, Right. And maybe even Charles. I think there's a couple of relationships that need to be explored before we can get to anyone else. Yeah, I'd like to see Docking come into this universe, and it could be a really good creative way of recasting without recasting, where they could bring in someone like, I don't know, Scott Eastwood. Dude, <laughs> Scott Eastwood. I, I just, I was no, just if you're doing No, if you're doing Docking, you got to bring in a, a, a half Japanese. Scott Eastwood needs and... another comic book role. <laughs> he, he needs justice that isn't GQ. Human Torch. I want Scott Eastwood as a Human Torch. We're just going to sit here and talk about Scott Eastwood all day if, <laughs> if I let that happen. Uh, let's see here. Do you think Negan's going to die on The Walking Dead? Uh, Karen Etheridge is, is saying she really thinks Negan's not going to die. But uh, what do you think? Look at me. What do you think? Look at me, Karen. Negan is not going to die, okay? <laughs> as much as I know everyone. I, look, I'm a Walking Dead fan, but I know realistically Negan's not going to die. It would be, imagine this, you have Daryl get Negan on his knees with a knife to his throat and Rick's got the python at him. That would be the best thing ever, but it's not going to happen, guys. Uh, Negan is going to be around for the long haul. If you've read the comics, they just printed issue number 161. Uh, I think it actually might come out tomorrow, uh, but Negan is still, spoiler alert, Negan's still around. He goes to jail, uh, and I do believe, like the rest of season seven, they're going to follow the comics pretty accurately with this Negan stuff. I don't think he's going anywhere. I talked to Jeffrey Dean Morgan at Comic-Con. He said he's in it for the long haul. Yeah. That means more than one or two seasons. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Matthew Santos wants to know, how do we think Spider-Man, Black Panther, and others, probably other new characters, will fit into the Infinity War saga? So well, we, we actually just recently got some news on that. Well, Spider-Man's not in the first part of Infinity War. Yeah. Uh, which is, well, at least is not a main part of right. the first Infinity War as of right now, which just went into production. Um, small, like very small version. I think it might still technically be pre-production. Right. But he's not listed on the cast list, not listed on the character list. Uh, I think that those characters are going to be the new Avengers. I think they're going to, phase four and five, they're going to be what carry it, like what Iron Man and Thor and Captain America have been. Right. Those guys can't keep acting forever. I think you have to shift it to Captain Marvel and Black Panther and Spider-Man and... I think, I think that Black Panther might have a much more uh, significant role in Infinity War than people might be thinking right now, if only because he is somebody who deals in both technology and mysticism. Right. So with that and with what we know about the Infinity Stones in the MCU, I think Black Panther is going to be one to watch. Uh, it, doesn't hurt that his movie comes out real, real close. It's the last movie before Infinity War. That's a fair <laughs> assessment, I think, when you consider all Panther's, T'Challa's uh, traits there. He's going he's gonna to be a huge player in that. All right. Uh, let's see here. We've got who's going to be the villain in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Michael Phillips is asking us that question. Is that, is that uh, who is the, you would know. Yeah, so, well... We'll see. <laughs> let's yeah, just, I feel like let's we'll, call it we'll see because there's um, going to be a kind of a couple different things going on in that movie. Yeah, I don't know yeah. If there's been a so, clear cut villain announced. There's there's been rumors that uh, the role, the character of Aisha, will be right. the main villain, right. um, who is uh, a an, an interesting character, kind of a cult leader uh, a, of a gigantic cult. Um, and then there's rumors that Ego. Uh, which is Kurt Russell's character and, and right. Star Lord's father in the movie, uh, that he could actually be playing a villainy role. So I'm interested to see how it ends up with Ego. What, what that, what that, well, how they're going to play that relationship? Because obviously we wanted to see Jason as I know, his I dad, know. Which you know, I'll allow it. I'll, I'll trust I, in James Gunn. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with them switching things up for film. I've never had that problem though. Uh, even with like the X Men movies, where they drastically change things all the time. I just want to see how, um, how Star Lord. I will say me. this: if I don't get to see Kurt Russell's face mustachioed on a giant planet at some point in that movie, it's going to be a like major a hateful eight mustache. Like I need like to a... see giant, yes, hateful eight mustachioed Kurt Russell's face on a planet in I'm that. A, I'm, a, I'm it, into that. It has to happen. All right, guys, we're going to go with one more question, and this is an awesome question from Nick Apollinar. Apollinar, there we go. I think that's probably a little closer. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Nick A. asks, 
If you could have one infinity stone, which would you choose? I'd probably want the time stone. Yeah? I think I'd want the time stone. That's a dangerous one. Yeah, but I would, if you could go back in time, you could really change everything. Like you could, you could be good, you could be bad, you could yeah. be neither, you could just have an awesome life and win the lottery and not have a million dollars in student loans. Well, you may not know this about me, but I'm a bit of a Star Wars fan. Oh, you? <laughs> Wait, is that a BB-8 tie clip? Oh, is it? Oh, weird. <laughs> Uh, and, and a Bosk pin, how strange. Um, the Star Wars fan in me, and more specifically the Sith in me, thinks that the Mind Stone would oh, be a lot of, of fun. Just go around controlling people's of minds. And I would just be playing a lot of pranks, though, I think. I, nothing too nefarious. You could play pranks with the Time Stone. I could have yeah, gone back yeah. and done this show twist. This could be my second time <laughs> doing this show. All right, Maybe guys, that's what we're going to do. That's where we're going to wrap up the show today, guys. The comments, we appreciate them. I see they're still flying by, so feel free to keep the conversation going with us on Twitter, at Lucas Siegel, at Brandon Davis, BD. We love chatting with you guys. We'll be back tomorrow and every weekday, 7 p.m. Eastern time for Comic Book Now. Thanks for watching, everybody.